Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. Uh, this is going to be my next journey. The uh, slat skins are coming up and uh, the slat structures do not have a internal skeleton like what you'd normally think of. There's no spar in the slats. You put a 40 thousandths doubler all the way down the crease here and then the ribs basically make up the structures with the uh, mounting plates uh, attached. So. Uh, they're small enough structures that you don't need to have a big old spar in there connecting everything. So, But given that, the, the skin pattern is bent over in one consistent solid piece uh, and then overlapped here and here. And you go down through the top of the skin to rivet to this part and then you rivet the bottom of the skin at this part. And the uh, thermo molded wingtips here uh, have to be able to fit inside the skin. On your plans, that's the bend pattern there. And uh, it's fairly complicated to do all that because you're only working with 18 millimeter flanges on that right hand side. So the way that my bending brake is set up, I've laid out my bend lines and that test piece, I was lucky enough to get it right on the first try. But those are the measurements, 16 and a half from the end, another 16 and a half, 174 and a half, and then 97 millimeters from this end in uh, give me the proper bend locations um, given the way that I'm actually going to bend it in the brake and I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit but this is a part that I'm not real thrilled <laughs> to be doing at the moment because it's a lot of material to mess up if I screw it up so the recently revised brake design is going to help with um, doing that so I can bend those tiny little overlapping flanges but I'm going to pause the video here and then show you what that all looks like once it's clamped together with the um, <laughs> Uh, with the skin and the rib in place. So we'll be right back. Okay, so check this out. Here we have the uh, skin now wrapped around. This all gets drawn down tightly at the rear surface of the slat when you clamp these two things together here and that, or uh, rivet along those that line there, those two pieces and this piece and that gives you your slat surface. The wingtips from Zenith are rough cut and I've drawn a line where the sort of bulge, they bulge out uh, as part of the molding process. I believe these are vacuum molded. So you've got to trim a considerable amount of that off to get down to the actual flat surface of the, um, so you can see where it flares up there, that's part of the molding process on a vacuum table. So you've got to trim a considerable amount of that off to actually get down to the true dimension of this uh, wingtip and then that actually goes in between the skin and the end rib or at least it fits inside the skin and then it gets riveted on. So just doing some test runs with this I <clears throat> I have my test pattern for the skin perfectly lined up to the, the drawings uh, so everything came out perfectly there so what I have to be very careful of is when I actually go to wrap this skin and rivet everything in place that I don't have um, that I, you know that I haven't drawn this flange in too tightly towards the uh, front either you know curling this up or curling this down I need it to be the true uh, curvature of the wingtips and I'm going to kind of use those for a guide to do that when I get the right once I set the riveting distance for this bottom flap so um, and there's a jig that you have to use or that you're supposed to use to put all this together and everything else and that, that should give you the right geometry. So I have to build that in order to skin these. But first up, of course, I have to bend the full, uh, whatever, six foot, five and a half foot lengths of these skins. So I'm not really worried about this bend back here. I'm not really worried about this bend. Those are easy. It's this little bend here that's going to be the difficult part. The first one should be easy enough. The second one, this first one's going to have to overhang that little lip on the edge of the brake that's only 5 eighths of an inch wide. And uh, I won't be able to use any leverage helpers to bend that up across the length, so that's the part I'm worried about. Now, I should be able to do this manually if, I, if it comes down to it, but there's four of these, so I don't want to have to mess with that. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you the, um, the way that I've laid this uh, skin out. This is the slat skin again. Just before I get to bending it, which hopefully doesn't turn out to be a disaster, so I realize the lighting is kind of terrible in here for this uh, because of the glare and stuff, but I wanted to show you, I laid out some just arbitrary reference lines here, uh, four of them across this span, 
and laid those out with the square and then using the tape measure or the scale measuring up from there to my corresponding bend lines. And one of the reasons that I'll use several lines across a given span like this is um, so that I can kind of confirm that my straight edge is, isn't waving. These modular straight edges or any, anything, you know, 10, 12 feet long, 8 feet long even, is going to have some sideways flex to it. So if you just lay it down and start clamping it, you may not actually have a straight line. That's most important to confirm that these, these reference hash marks here at, at just random points along the length of it are mostly to confirm that you've got your straight edge uh, laying flat. And so then if you're cutting, you're going to be cutting a relatively straight part. When you're just laying out a bend line, it's not quite as critical simply because uh, your break is going to bend straight anyway, <laughs> hopefully. And uh, so the main thing is just having the ends be specifically located um, properly because then, you know, when you clamp end to end, it's just going to bend across the bending nose regardless of where these lines are or whether the uh, straight edge had any wobble to it. So, and then the other thing that the multiple lines do is if you were to, let's say, so this, this measurement here is 33 millimeters up from the edge. Let's say I made this one 34 by accident or 35 by accident. And then these ones were all right on at 33. By laying the straight edge across multiple lines at the same measurement, I might catch if one or two of them are off and therefore may need to make an adjustment. Maybe I just made a measuring error or maybe I had the edge of the tape measure you know, hooked on the table instead of the edge of the part, you know, if it was very close like this. So it's just a way to confirm that you have your measurements correct all the way down in expanse. So uh, the way that this part is laid out, this is actually uh, 16 and a half times two, so 33, because remember the bottom side is the flange measurement for that little flange that's an opposing bend. So the bottom of this is measured at 16 and a half for that first little flange there. And then this line corresponds to the second 16 and a half for the next 18 millimeter flange. And everything else gets bent up, up on, on this side. So this gets bent up, this gets bent up, and that gets bent up. So that's 97 down from the top, 174 and a half in between here, 33 and a half here, or twice the distance of 16 and a half. And then when I flip it over, the first bend I'll do is from the other side, I'll bend the other flange up, that 18 millimeter flange here, that's measured at 16 and a half. So that'll be the, the step that I'll put the camera in the tripod there and we'll go from there. I've notched it per the plans and put a, a relief radius in there and uh, we'll go from here. And it actually took about 15 minutes, 20 minutes to lay this thing out completely. So these skins take a little while to make. They're gonna take a while to bend and hopefully we've laid everything out correctly. And when we get our result, hopefully the full, whatever that is, four and a half, five foot long skin will profile like this once we wrap it around everything. So more on that in a moment. All right, gang, so I've got the uh, first bend set up for the slat skin. This will be the 18 millimeter flange. That's the opposing bend. Remember, everything else is measured on the other side of this skin and is all bent uh, towards the inside of the skin. This is the only one that's an opposing bend, so we start with this one first. So because I have just that slab bending arm now that's only 5 eighths of an inch wide, I have to have this uh, piece of slip here because otherwise the edge of the skin on the flange will get caught on that seam. I probably could bend this without the arm in place, but I don't want to mess with that until I get a good um, straight bend in here yet. So what I'll do is I'll bend this one up, I'll take the uh, leverage helper off, and then I'll flip it over. Uh, bend the next flange up, slide it out, bend the next one, slide it out um, completely, turn it around, and then bend it the other way. So remember, the piece that you're bending up is what gains length. That's why for this measurement, uh, 16 and a half millimeters, when I bend it up, as the bend line lifts up off the table to go around the radius, it ends up being an 18 millimeter flange at the end of the bend. Now the difficult thing on this part here is the bend angle for this piece needs to be uh, 103 degrees open so I don't want to bend it bend it too far it's kind of hard to tell with it still in the brake it's really difficult to take a, a solid measurement because the brake table doesn't lay or the uh, bending arm doesn't lay completely flat uh, and such but what I'll do is I'll bend it as about as close as I can get it uh, by eye I'll take it out and uh, measure it and hopefully it will be close enough that I can either hand seam the 
finish angle or I'll just put it back on the brake and bend it further. But the last thing you want, to, you don't want to go for it too far because then you've got to bend it back. Although if you're hand seaming, it's easier to bend back than it is to bend forward. So we'll get through it. But so this first bend should go no problem. Um, the slat skin from end to end is approximately four and a half, maybe five feet long. It might even be more like close to six feet, five and a half, six feet. So because I have no clamping bolts that can go through it, I've had to use this improvised tensioning rod, which you've seen in another video when I did the landing gear channel. Uh, much less stress on this this time because I'm only bending 16 thou. So I've got my clamping bolts on either end. Those are nice and tight. And then I've got my tensioning bolts in the center, just kind of keeping tension across the center of this thing. So because this is such a simple, thin bend, there shouldn't be any slippage at any point during this uh, forming process. But this is a very difficult part to bend because of all the complicated angles and opposing bends that you have. And of course, you don't want to kink the skin or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and bend this one first and hopefully get a decent, uh, decent bend out of it. That's about where I want to be. Because there's no center hinge, center support across this hinge here, it tends to um, bow out a little bit as you're bending in the middle and so your your ends end up being a little bit more uh, bent than your outward side but that's even true with the industrial brakes it's just a little bit more pronounced on this brake so uh, that is pretty much all the further that I really want to bend this I can kind of estimate with this that's really close so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. I'll take it out. I'll take a measurement and see where we're at. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe, and let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects.